Gotcha. So yeah, we have access to both the web the Web of Science Medline database and their core collection at this point. Um, you're probably very familiar with Medline. It's a substantial portion of what you're accessing when you access PubMed. Um, PubMed is med, the Medline database, which is exclusively um, health and medical science journals, plus some other um, resources that make up PubMed. Um, core, Web of Science does search the, med, the Medline database, but we also have access to their core collection, um, which is another 20, 21,000, 21,100 peer-reviewed journals at this point. And of course, that number is constantly increasing and fluctuating back and forth. Um, but the, the core collection is quite broad. It covers 250 subjects in sciences, social sciences, and pretty much across the board. So um, while it is, while there are dedicated collections for other, other subjects, this one is quite broad, quite broad in its coverage. Um, in order to access Web of Science um, from the library's homepage, this is the library's website at library.usa.eu. Um, all you need to do is go to Resources and Databases, and hit this Resources drop-down menu, and then select Databases, and that'll take you into um, a list of all of our of all of our most uh, most used databases and and all of the databases that we have divided up by subject here. Uh, so Web of Science is accessible right here, but you could also go into or I'm sorry, it's under Multidisciplinary. So there there's a couple different ways to access it, but um, through, there it is, through multidisciplinary, or because it's one that we expect to get such, such common use, there's a quick link right there at the top. I kind of like to contrast Web of Science with other databases by saying that other databases are pretty much centered on the article as their main kind of piece of data. Web of Science does a lot of work to catalog all of the associated metadata um, with regard to an individual article, publication, researcher, institution. So whereas some databases focus heavily on the article as the sort of item of interest, um, Web of Science is looking at all of those individual pieces of data. And what I'll talk about here in a bit is how that enables you to do um, improved analytics of, of your search results. So it functions like any other database in that you can do a, a basic search, say, on pain management and, and get your um, medical journals listed from, from whichever collection you're searching and then link into the University of St. Augustine Library to access the article. It will display if there's a free full text available from the publisher here as well. Um, so in that sense, it functions as any database that you might be familiar with, very much like PubMed or EBSCO or any of the databases that the library provides. But they're, there's, they're paying so much attention to the details of the metadata that it enables you to go in and analyze that much deeper. Um, so that, that's going to be the, the second portion of, of this talk, is, is getting into those analytics to some extent. Um, the other thing that, that separates Web of Science is the ability to search citation records. So uh, they essentially catalog the entire reference list of any article that's listed in, in Web of Science, and you can do a cited reference search and use that as another stepping stone to establish other research. Um, you might be familiar with something like that from Google Scholar. Um, where you can see which which papers have uh, have cited a particular paper or which papers that that paper cites, so you can go in both directions um, from the article to articles that have cited it and to the articles that that article cites, if that makes sense. Um, but just for a quick demo of of the basics of this, um, you can choose from the databases. There's a, a few. Um, additional databases that they do sort of throw in for free, apparently, um, but they're a little obscure, the Russian Science Index and the Korean Journal Database. Um, but we'll, generally, we stick to the Web of Science Core or Medline, um, but you can also choose all databases. So one thing that I want to point out before we get into that is that you are able to create an account um, for yourself and sign in um, to manage your own um, saved searches and things like that. That's separate 
from um, just being able to access Web of Science through the library. So as long as you're accessing Web of Science through that library link that I just demonstrated, um, as long as you're accessing it through that, you'll have access to the database, to the full text, to everything. If you do want to go in, it's going to let me get my button. <laughs> if you do want to go in and sign up for a special account with, with Web of Science, then you can do additional things that are tailored around that account in terms of um, managing your own reference lists and things like that. Um, so just want to make draw that distinction because a lot of times somebody sees that sign in and thinks they need to sign in with their USA email in order to access Web of Science. You'll know that you're accessing it through the library and, and accessing the library's resources because you'll have this big uh, banner at the top here and any uh, any results that that do appear in your menu should have should have links to to the USA library uh, alongside those so um, I pointed to those here um, all you need to do if you're in is to access the full text of a research of a research article that appears in your list is click on on this little button for the for the USA resources and that will take you to a list of links where um, either where you can access it through uh, the full text subscriptions that the library provides access to um, or there there may display here uh, a link to request it through interlibrary loan and then we'll of course be able to um, as librarians locate that article for you and then um, send you the PDF when we receive it um, sometimes when you're following um, through these links this will take you to a list of the resources that the library um, has access to the full text through but you may need to click on a couple of links to actually get to the full text so it'll drop you to that list first and then once you get in here you should be able to access the full text um, I mentioned previously uh, very often um, you'll see this free full text from the publisher and uh, that'll appear anytime that it's that it's free and we've configured it so that it won't appear, and this is this is I'm very thankful for. Um, they've worked with us to keep it from appearing when clicking on it is only going to get you a paywall. Uh, so it'll only take you it'll that button will only appear if you're going to be able to get the free full text of the article from the publisher. Um, so either one of those uh, resources um, should get you the full text. If you're working with um, browser, or I'm sorry, not browser, citation managers, and want to export the citations from Web of Science, um, you can do that using this export button here. Um, so you could go through and select any number of, of the articles from here. And then when you want to export those to your citation manager, you just choose that button and then um, select whichever citation manager you're using. Um, not everybody uses EndNote. We fully recognize that. I personally um, use a program called Zotero, but you are able to export under other file formats here, and that um, would take you to, to what you need. If you ever have any questions with that, we do do uh, webinars on citation managers, and we can spend a little more uh, detail going into um, how you do that for each specific citation manager. But what that allows you to do is export the PDF and all of the data that you need to create your citations into that citation manager. And that's just that export button right there. Um, some of the interesting sort features, I think, in here. Um, so right now we've got it being sorted by date, which is not uncommon at all. But I did mention that Web of Science works so heavily with cited references um, that you can also search. Once, once you've performed a subject search, like right now we've got um, a subject search for pain management and I can actually list that in order of the number of times that that paper has been cited within the web of science database um, so right now it's showing this is the most cited at 4081 citations I don't have my glasses on but yeah I think that's 4081 um, so you can potentially um, utilize that once you've crafted your search terms to sift this for maybe some of the most important papers on a subject. Um, it's, it's terribly unfortunate when um, you do an entire literature review and you've done your keyword search and you've written up this great literature review that you think covers everything 
and somehow in your search you missed the five most cited papers on that topic. Um, so I think this is a way um, kind of double check that for sure, but to also see some of the most influential, um, some of the most heavily cited, potentially most important papers um, that may be published on a particular topic. Um, that said, just because a paper is cited, it certainly doesn't mean that that's the most impactful study. Um, some of the some of the most cited papers in the history of science are bad science, and they're cited because as examples of bad science. Um, Web of Science does a good job of trying to call things like that out, um, but just I can't I can't point to citations and and let let that slide without that comment. Um, so, did you have any uh, questions, or Ryan, did you have any comments on anything that I've said so far? I was just going to note that that in that. All uh, this October, uh, we will be offering uh, uh, citation manager uh, trainings. And the first one that's coming up is on October 12th, and I'll be going over Esotero um, for that one. And then there'll be a follow-up, I think the following week, uh, where uh, we will look at uh, EndNote, um, as well as how to, um, how to uh, sync up your online EndNote account uh, um, uh, with the desktop version of it. So I just wanted to kind of throw that in and give you a little bit of a preview of that as well. <laughs> sure. And since, yeah. since, Ryan, since Ryan has mentioned that, one of the things that comes with the Web of Science subscription is um, free access to the online version of EndNote, um, which does have a somewhat different functionality from the desktop version, um, but the desktop version does require you didn't mean to do that. It does require you to pay a, a service fee um, to utilize. You can utilize this online, um, somewhat limited functionality version of EndNote um, with at, at no cost because of the because the library subscribes to Web of Science. Uh, but yeah, those uh, maybe you can throw a link to the to the library calendar. Yeah, totally. That's citation right. yeah. managers. Um, just a last quick thing over here. Um, I mean, this is common to most databases, but I think uh, some useful things for, for searching and, and limiting your search, particularly when you're searching in a broad database um, that covers multiple multiple subject areas. Um, the, you can certainly limit on, on the, the years, you know, limiting to the last 10 years or selecting particular years to, to filter out your research. Um, but the Web of Science also lists research domains. Um, so right now, my search is returning um, some two two thousand articles in the arts and humanities, and that's probably not what I'm interested in. How pain is depicted in Western literature is probably not what I'm looking for when I'm looking at pain management. Um, so I could I could deselect that or or focus on on the science of technology and social sciences, and then refine the search. Um, you may see. Um, things popping up in their business or um, humanities or arts or something that would just be completely irrelevant. Irrelevant. So that's a way for you to filter out the, the less relevant results from your search and, and one that I think Web of Science does a particularly good job of. Um, the other thing that's fairly unique to Web of Science but, but somewhat growing um, and as a professional researcher as opposed to a student researcher, although it does apply, to, although funding certainly applies to student researchers also, um, Web of Science tracks, um, when it's available, tracks funding information on particular articles. So this is a way for you to do a search on a particular subject and then see which institutions are, are doing a great job of funding that. Um, so you can see that, um, NIH has, has funded some 8,000 of the articles that we, they're mentioned as a, as a funding source um, on some 8,000 articles that we've got here. Um, HHS, uh, Health and Human Services, also quite high. Uh, you could theoretically filter on those things, but I mentioned that, I think, um, as a way of sort of gauging research funding availability. If you're looking to um, apply for grants and that kind of thing, you can see do a detailed search of a particular topic and see which institutions uh, most heavily fund that. So that's quite useful. Um, I think the others are fairly standard. Um, 
immediate open access text availability, filtering by year. Um, I just wanted to point to the, to the filters or limiters, they're sometimes called, that are, are unique to Web of Science. <clears throat> the, oh, so next I wanted to kind of jump to the, the citation uh, actually searching on, on cited references. Uh, so this, this is what I mentioned, looking specifically at the reference lists and doing a search, a search that way. Um, so maybe I've been reading um, some amazing work by a librarian named Julie Evener, and I'm sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> and I wanted to look up her as a cited author and, and maybe indicate um, some of that research. So, and then I can see here, there's a Julie Evener that published in the College of Undergraduate Libraries and the Journal of the Medical Library and Association. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's our, our library director. <laughs> Actually, I know it is, because I know both of those papers. Um, but if you want to, to search cited references for a particular individual, then you can access quickly and easily access the full text of that. Um, you can also link, and this is where this database comes in so useful, over here on the right side, you can link to the citing articles. So you can search on an author or um, a title or a journal and see where those individuals are being cited. You can either link to the text of the article itself or you can then click on these links over here. And now I've got all the papers that cited Julie's innovation article. Um, so that's been cited in these two in these two articles, but those could be very re relevant to me broadening my search, um, particularly as I'm trying to bring um, a literature review more current. So I might be looking at older information and find find this research that's been more recently cited that's citing some of the same information that I'm looking at, um, and then you can sort that by the number of times that they're cited, just like we did with anything else. Um, so the cited references is, it, I, I like to think of it as one more step. I mean, I, I don't think um, any established researcher is unfamiliar with the concept of combing um, reference lists and bibliographies for additional relevant references for what they're working on. But what Web of Science, one of the things that Web of Science does so well is incorporating that into a digital, corporate, incorporating all of those cited references into a digital, sort, digital search interface. Uh, any questions on that? We are okay. good right now. Yeah. What, what was that, Ryan? It's great right now. No, no. Okay, good. Uh, keep going. Yeah, Ryan's kind of monitoring the chat for me and letting me know if, if that gets out of hand and needs to be addressed. So, um, so the last thing I wanted to spend a little bit on, just back from the from the initial search screen, um, I'm actually going to mention this. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm used to having some back or link to go back to my initial, like start from scratch search. And it's a, I, I found it a little anti, not, not anti-intuitive, but I, it, it wasn't where I was looking for it. You can always just click on the web of science text here um, to link back to the very initial search where you can choose your, choose which collection you're searching and put in your basic terms and everything. Um, but because that didn't look like a button or a link or anything to me for a long time, I, I was searching for how do I just go back to the main screen? Eric, I I had the same thing happen to me as well. And I'm a seasoned I would, user. I, I would say uh, the two of us are both. And I look at and I could not figure it out for a few minutes. And I was like, oh, okay. I'll just yeah. Come. Yeah. Once I did, I kind of felt a little foolish. But but yeah, it's 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 sort of camouflaged as a background or something there. So anyway, what I wanted to, well, the, the next thing I wanted to talk about um, was the analytics. And, and it's, a, I think this one is, there are a couple different ways to approach it, but, but one I think is more from a professional researcher standpoint of getting a sense of who's contributing to the literature, uh, who, what, topics are maybe related topics for interprofessional development or institutional funding and things like that that I talked about in terms of the limiters and the filters and things like that. Um, but there's also a, a great tool called 
incorporated into their analytics that allows you to actually get an overview of that. So um, let's just go with, I don't know why I've got this in mind. Um, I have a physicist friend who I'm gonna utilize on this one. Um, so this is a friend of mine that, that works at, oh, no way. I must have, probably because I just did physics. Uh, he's a physicist at UCSD who, who's a good friend of mine. Um, why is that not working? Oh, because it's topic not author. So you could do a keyword search or a topic search any any way you like on here. I'm just choosing that and doing it wrong because it's got to be Shpirko. I should have just stuck with my pain management, but I wanted to mix it up. Um, Trying to get clever. <laughs> yeah, I know. Every, and, and you try and do it on the spot, and then everything goes sideways. So this is just a, a typical resu results list. I've I've only I've only searched on searched on the author. Um, I could do this as, as a topic. I could do this um, searching on the institution. Like I said, there's all of those data points that Web of Science brings together in the searchable interface. Um, but so this is a search on the author. I'll demonstrate this a couple of different ways. Um, but I can create a citation report from from that generated list. So um, by clicking on that, I'll get this sort of overview screen of everything that's in my results list. Um, so this gives me, this is essentially, given the search that I've done, this is essentially a, an overview of that author's page. If you're a faculty member and looking to establish your impact on the field, um, wanting to demonstrate that your research is, is being util, utilized beyond the walls of the, the institution, um, you can use this to, to get a, to incorporate data into, into whatever tenure promotional report you might be looking at. Um, if you're interested in, in, in generating something like that for your tenure promotional report, I'm the guy that you would talk to. Um, I would love to, to get in and help you um, really tweak out your application for, for promotion or tenure and, and get data like this uh, pulled for you and incorporated into that report. But you can see we're analyzing 33 articles. Um, that that was that's just uh, what was what was in our list. Um, H index is a citation um, indicator for how how often um, that work is cited. So in this case, for that particular author, as we've specified it, um, he's quite heavily cited. I'm quite proud of him as <laughs> as a friend. Uh, so that, that's the H index, just like you would get um, an impact factor or an H index for a journal or, uh, or, a, pu or a particular publication, you can get an index for an author themselves and see how many times his work has been cited. And then again, here we can link into the citing articles. So of all the articles that he's written, we can see all the articles that he's cited. And we can go in and view that list and export that and pull those references as well. Uh, and there is also this without self citations. So obviously, um, people are working on things that are occasionally they will cite their own work. Um, Web of Science fil also places a filter on of all the work that's cited, which ones of those were not the author himself, and then they they indicate that there. So some fifteen times he cited his own work, but some seven hundred times other, others have cited his, apparently. So um, this is a really useful one, like I said, particularly for exploring, um, linking into cited, to citing articles, but also as a, as a faculty member for demonstrating the impact of your research as it's recorded in Web of Science. Um, there are other ways to do that as well, and we could certainly work together to bring a lot of those things together, um, but that's, that's a very useful feature in Web of Science for, for individuals looking for application for tenure and promotion. Um, the other thing that I wanted to uh, demonstrate is, is the uh, sort of article analytics where we're going in and, and analyzing the articles themselves. So let's go back to pain management just as a topic, not as an author. So now we've got 
our list of some 80,000 resources on a very broad search like pain management. Uh, maybe we want to get specific, a little more specific and refine those results to pain management and physical therapy. So we're going to use both of those, both of those key phrases. And that gets us down to some 4,000. Obviously, we could get as specific as we wanted to tailor our search. But I want to keep it kind of broad to demonstrate the analytics. Um, when you do have a subject defined and, you, and you've and you returned all the results of your articles, like I said, the articles are there. You can access the full text through the library. That's very useful. Um, but one of the things that Web of Science does, particularly on its own, is this analytics. So now we've got our article list. We can go to Analyze Results by clicking that link here. Eventually, that'll take us into this view screen. And these, along the left side of here, you'll see all of the um, sort of data points that are tracked for each, for each of those articles that are returned in our results list. Um, and we can, we can certainly um, view the, the analytics or this sort of map or word cloud or however you want to classify this particular diagram. Um, Right now we're just on, on categories. So we can see, you know, for pain management and physical therapy, what are the related categories? Um, I don't think any of these are terribly surprising. Orthopedics and rehabilitation, neurology, obviously anesthesiology. Uh, not, not so interested in it for, the, for seeing the, the sort of cross categorization of things, but I could go into organizations and now I'm looking at which organ is which. When you look at the list of articles, which faculty at which institutions are um, publishing the most the most work and the most cited work in in those areas. Um, so apparently, Harvard University and the University of Sydney, Australia, are uh, are quite. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we went to those institutions if they had pain management programs, um, something s specifically dedicated to that because they're turning out such high, such high, um, high end and highly cited research in, in pain management. Um, you can view this different ways. Um, this tree map I think is quite useful. Um, there's also a bar graph. Uh, for me, somehow just getting a sense of the overall is, is clear in what they call a tree map here. So that's the institutions. So these are the authors of the papers are affiliated with these institutions. That's that's how this is sorted. I mentioned um, the data point of the funding agencies earlier. So any of the publications that we now have on um, pain management and physical therapy uh, of of the articles that have funding indicated in their in their item records, these are the most um, the most heavily cited, I don't careful how I use that, um, the most heavily affiliated funding agencies for the research in pain management and physical therapy. Just like I said with the, with the filtering and things like that, um, this is a great way if you're looking for grant funding, um, who, who is funding the most, the most um, published research on a, on a particular topic. This is, this is a great way to get a, a nice condensed overview of, of those. Um, of course, that doesn't mean that they're going to fund your research, but it does mean that they're funding a lot of published research on that topic. Uh, for this is a little, maybe a little more for students or maybe new career professionals, um, but for a particular topic, I can sort search by source titles, and in this context, that essentially means um, which journals are are um, publishing those articles. So if you're new to new to your to a field, you're a student or you're a new professional in a specialty, um, you can come in here and do a particular search on, um, on a detailed topic and see which journals um, are publishing the most research in that. Um, as a publishing researcher, if you did, did a quite detailed search, um, I've got pain management, I've got um, uh, physical therapy on this search. Um, if you're looking for journals to publish in, um, this is a way to indicate at least for what's for the for the data that Web of Science has access to, these are the articles that are or these are the journals that are publishing the most articles on the topic of pain management and physical therapy. Uh, so if you're looking for someone to publish your research and you have an article 
Um, this is another way to, I've got a, a few other ways to identify um, potential publishing venues for your work, um, but this is a, a great tool for that as well. Um, that's the that's the big ones on this side. Um, I, I just want to draw the distinction between um, organizations enhanced and toward the bottom here we've got organizations. So I was just about to ask you about that, Eric. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> sure, no problem. Um, so the difference between organizations and organizations enhanced is that. Uh, Organization enhanced kind of links all sorts of all, all the sub organizations. So all of the schools, um, the nursing school of the Harvard, if there's a nursing school at Harvard, um, the different campuses of the University of St. Augustine, uh, the different institutes that might be affiliated with the, like at UCSD in San Diego, there's the Moore's Cancer Center. And the Moore's Cancer Center might be a published organization. And that would come up when we when we search these, um, but the organizations enhanced would bring those all together under the umbrella of the umbrella organization. So, um, universe here we have Duke University. Um, if we were to to dig in and look at that, then there's probably a school of physical therapy at Duke University that is then you know sort of a sub institution. But that, that doesn't come into detailed play but if if you're wondering what that distinction is that that that's that so the organizations are the individual organizations and the organizations enhanced is the umbrella um, bringing them all together under one. if we've got no questions or or if you want um a little we're we're a small group we're totally open to going into more detail on on a particular item or another so please feel free to to pipe in if you if you'd like to do that um, otherwise, um, I just wanted to demonstrate one or two um, other kind of associated things that come alongside um, Web of Science. One is, I, I already mentioned, one I already mentioned was the um, temporary, act, not temporary, the online access to EndNote. Um, but there's also a program called Capernio. Um, this isn't a cool. this is by the, it's not particular to Web of Science, but it's incorporated well with Web of Science. It's essentially a plugin for your browser um, that allows you to more easily locate uh, open access versions of a paper, um, whether that's a, an author manuscript or a preprint or um, an accepted manuscript or even a, a final publisher version of, the, of an article. If it's, if it's available as an open access text, Capernio is one of the tools that are out there uh, to allow you to do that. So you just you click the button there, and it installs as a as a plugin to your to your Chrome browser. Um, I believe it does have to be in the Chrome browser. I don't know if it, if it, if they've got that developed for other browsers at this point or not. I haven't um, had a chance to check yet, but yeah. Yeah, I don't um, use other browsers, so I don't usually give that yeah, a thought until I'm aware of these things. Right. Uh, but uh, you you'll see that it runs as a little plugin. Um, right right now, I've got it up here uh, on the. On my toolbar, it's just a small K that runs kind of in the background. And I can show you how that works. So let's say let's say I'm in Google Scholar and stick with our pain management. Let's go up there. So let's say I'm looking at the publisher website of a particular article. You'll see now this sort of spinning tab that appears on the side. And what that's that's searching for an open access version of the article right now. Um, if that if there is an open open access version available, that'll kind of slide out and say, hey, there's a free free text here. Um, again, um, to draw the distinction, these things are running so slow today. To draw the distinction between the various items that are out there um, as open access documents, um, you you could have access to. Let's see, so we've got. Yeah, it's saying it's saying there is no open access version available. But if I find one, yeah. So whoops. this one I can see from Google Scholar that there should be an open access version available at the publisher. So if we do the same thing on this one, we should get an indicator here 
that there's a, a link to the publisher version. So this just runs in the background of your browser and pretty much anytime you're on an article page where you'll kind of find that dead end where it says pay, pay $35 to access the PDF of this article. Um, this is a great tool for kind of finding your way around that. Um, often these things are in university archives. Um, they are occasionally only uh, uh, not necessarily the final publisher version, but might be the accepted manuscript, so the exact same text, but without the polish and branding of the journal. Um, or it could be a preprint or something like that. Uh, but it will indicate whether it's a whether it's a final publisher version or not. And, and link you directly to the full text of that just by clicking on that link. Um, it's a very convenient tool. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of other ones out there, but yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of other ones out there. I've got another one running in my browser up here called the Open Access button, which does essentially the same thing. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's a couple of different ones. I think those are probably some of the most common ones. Um, Google Scholar does a pretty good version of that just within the interface in the way that they were displaying our results. You'll see the links uh, for open access articles occasionally there. Uh, so that's that's pretty useful. <clears throat> yep, that, that pretty much uh, covers everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, I, I think we're good to go. Um, does anybody have any, any questions? I, uh, um, actually, right before we go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repost our uh, survey. Uh, for this session here. It's a real quick survey to take and it's just to kind of uh, uh, to tell us how we're doing. Uh, I think what is it about five or six questions tops I think. Yeah so, it's, it takes yeah. 20 seconds I think so but that's a exactly. way for you to give us feedback on this webinar. Chat, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe things that yeah so you can just click the link in the chat and, and, and right. fill that out and submit it. Um, but it, that's a good way to let us know what kinds of um, webinars you'd like to see us doing. Um, if there's something that we maybe need to incorporate into this or spend more time on, we'd love to hear that. Um, we want this to be as useful for you as we can, and we do plan to to redo to represent this one um, regularly. So right. anything that any any feedback you can give us to to improve those things are greatly appreciated. Um, but with that, um, that's our there's our contact information. Like I said. Um, I know we had at least one faculty member in here um, that if, if you're interested in, in getting my assistance, putting together that uh, faculty impact profile or working with um, some, of, some of the analytics and, and would like um, any assistance with that in Web of Science, I'd be happy to do that. Um, if you're interested in getting your work, um, any open access versions of your work posted within the SOAR at USA Archive, I'd be happy to help with that as well. And um, Ryan's always available for you as, as well for consultation. Um, but thanks for coming out. And yeah, if no thank you. Yeah, if there's no questions, we'll sign out and say good night, but feel free to contact us with any anything that might come up, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you all very much.